Okay, take three of recording the intro of this podcast because we just keep messing it up. I'm pressing the button. Three, two, one, now. It's because I'm sitting here. Keelan's probably better at button pressing. Yeah. He's better at pressing Bloggy's buttons and Bloggy's better at pressing his buttons. Yeah. All right, bye, 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 Bloggy. Quick disclaimer, if I sound like a husky mess, uh, it's because I am a you husky are. mess. Yeah. Uh, also, quick disclaimer, this is Sam, not Keelan, quite obviously, and I'm yeah. sitting in Keelan's chair, and also there's only one camera angle for this to anyone who's watching on YouTube. Um, the reason being, we have just... Ah, <laughs> Like a fucking dog hair, my man. <laughs> so yeah, Keelan's gone to Sweden. Uh, so he's not with us today, but- Makes it sound like he's died. Well, he's not he, with us he today. He can't be with us today. But me and Giles, um, yeah, as you said, I just got back from Red Bull Art of Motion. Uh, motion? No, Red Art Bull Art of Motion. motion. <laughs> and we thought we would uh, dive in on some of the, the sort of the talking points because there's a lot of stuff being said at the moment. Mm. And we- I mean, so the first thing I think we should address here, right? We have the rosy eyed spectacles of having been on an incredible trip in the, yeah. over the last week with many of our good friends and we got paid for it. So of course there's going to be some stuff that we're going to say that's probably like, oh, well, you know, it's because yeah. they went and had fun. Yeah. Secondly, I'm also going to address some things that I have like, we've had numerous, numerous conversations about some of the stuff that we're going to talk about over the last week. And I'm going to be saying some stuff that is like, not word of mouth. It's like, I've heard it from the source, so to speak, but they're not here to say that themselves. Yeah. So like apologies to sort of some of the Red Bull guys and, and random people who were there, if maybe I say not quite the right thing, but what I'm going to do is try and summarize a lot of people's complaints, criticisms and questions of the event and give some extra insight from what I learned on the event. Because yeah. I went there with a very like, inquisitive mind as to what was yeah. going on. And, and we learned a lot. Like, we did. And it's good to take into consideration the fact that, as you said, we've got rose tinted goggles on because, you know, we were there and we got to see it, but we're on the inside. But what we didn't get to see was how it was portrayed from the outside. And yeah, I think that's what we're trying to do is kind of blend the perspectives here. Um, you know, and, that, and that's a good thing to do. That's what podcasts are for, to talk about relevant topics. So Exactly. And I got my flashy new phone Ooh. with no cracks on the screen and I've got some notes. Bougie. Um, so I think the first, first things first, uh, I, I guess, no, what, what the hell was first things first? So I think the biggest confusion that I've seen since the event, we're, we're going to go on to topics of such as like the, the format of the, uh, the actual live event, the competition, like yeah. why Ellis didn't win, why Ed won, but didn't win, etc. Uh, we'll talk about sexism and things. The the first thing I kind of want to talk about is, and something that was so, it made so much sense once I found this out. So much sense. So this art motion, as many, many, many people have addressed, they're like, it didn't feel like it was promo. It didn't feel like it was mm. hyped up to be an art motion. Where was the on-site qualifier? Where was the online qualifier? There was an online qualifier for one place, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so what what actually happened out there during this week, and I've got like the booklet here with the schedule in it. Um, there were a load of talks planned by the guys, like really like long in-depth talks in this like bar where we sat around and we, we, we touched on a lot of really important subjects ranging from like how to ensure people are getting paid more and equal pay and the whole sexism talk topic and, and all these things. But one of the first things that was brought up by Nico is that this wasn't meant to be a, have been an art motion. Yeah. It was meant to be a completely separate event, yeah. a re still a Red Bull event, a re an event Red Bull was involved in. But from what I understand, Nico and the team were planning like a creative event where they invited some of the kind of more prominent athletes, which mm. is why a lot of people had criticisms that it felt quite elitist. But that we say prominent athletes, but they're some of the more reliable athletes who like they have the skills, they have the weight, they have the connections, like they're inviting the people who are at the, at the end of the day at the top of the sport to come and make content. So the video aspects were going to stay the same, yeah. but also take part in these talks and do lots of like, like try and just have a week of like creativity and progressiveness and try and like flesh out some of these ideas and see where 
we can take and, things. And them also trying to also move away from the competitive dynamic and focus more on getting a group of free runners and creatives together and, you know, just having a good time making you know, some fun content to, to put out there. Yeah. And so like, obviously that's a very, we can, we've kind of summarized that very shortly and it might not be inc- like completely accurate. Um, but what it sounds like it happened is kind of in the 11th hour, Red Bull, who'd already kind of said they wanted to be involved, turned around and said like, you can't do it unless it's an R motion. Like we're not going to fund it. So therefore that's why this whole like live competition aspect felt very kind of tacked on the end, all a bit rushed, not quite like as hyped up as you would expect there yeah. wasn't like the on-site qualifier because it was never like meant to really be that big of yeah. a thing yeah um it also like it, it doesn't necessarily explain sort of some of the 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 dynamics around like the sexism issues that are involved with a live event with you know prize money and and online qualifiers and stuff like this um it, it completely doesn't sort of take those points away but it does just uh, as an overall explain why it didn't really feel like the live aspect of this, a yeah. bar, you know, new course and and the, the the combo style thing, it didn't really feel very progressive. It felt almost like a bit weaker compared to the sort of the scale and organization of a normal R motion. Yeah. And I think for this, you know, there was the thing people really didn't get about it was the fact that the, there were actually three rounds yeah. that the judges had to judge. For a lot of people, the only thing they saw was the live stream of the event. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And then you have like, you know, this person winning this. So, um, and then being confused about who actually won and why they won. Like, I, th- I think I will straight up sort of say that there is deserved criticism to some degree of a lack of communication from Red Bull. Like it really, I mean, there was messaging on the website and if you'd looked into it and things, but it's not like there was that level of, you know, social media promo and marketing that normally goes into our emotion. I guess for a lot of people, you really have to hold their hand through yeah. through the process of what this actually is. Everyone, to understand and because it. there was no hand holding, everyone assumed it was going to be a normal art emotion yeah. format, which by the time- I mean, time, it's called art emotion for however it, many years, people it, are going to be assuming it's exact, like, uh, yeah. it's what art emotion is. It, yeah. And if it hadn't been called art emotion and mm. it had been called something else, mm. there would be so much less confusion. I think so too. Like, And also it, it really does just take- explaining what this format was, you know what I mean? Cause you know, we had the first heat, which was the people's choice where the athletes went out. I've got it written, You've down, got here. It, you got it written down here. It, uh, it wasn't actually, it was exploration channels, exploration channels. but within that was people's choice. Yeah. Um, but yes, yeah, so, so it was exploration challenge, which was the athletes went out with the entire Island. Yeah. Yeah. So let's, let, yeah, let's explain this. So there's three big sections, mm. all of those collaboratively, the athletes can gain points over that. Uh, and then at the end, the total amount of points they have places them on the podium, yeah. which is why Travis won. Yeah. Uh, because it wasn't just from his, cause obviously a lot of people are like, oh, Travis's final run, you know, it's not as good as Ellis's whatever, but Travis actually won the first, like the first two heats yeah. before going into the last heat. And he actually, it, when you, when you look at it like that, he actually only needed to place fourth yeah. in order to get enough points to be able to podium at the top for a lot of people. They wouldn't, I don't know if they knew about those first two heats well, the, yeah. and the score. And it's it. completely down to lack of communication from Red Bull. And I, I it, although, yeah, it was on the website. It just, it, as you said, handholding. Yeah. A bit of handholding. Pe- people needed handholding and it, it wasn't there. Um, but yeah, to run it back. So there were three, three days, three challenges, exploration challenge. The athletes had to go out and basically film. It was imagine own the spot. Cause a lot of people are familiar with that competition. Mm. You go out, you film three clips, you submit them by the end of the day to the judges, the judges vote on which one of your clips is the best. And you get judged upon that. And whoever had the best clip gets the most points. And I think Ed Scott got the best. Ed Scott won that heat. Yeah. I think right? Travis came second. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the can't remember right. the exact thing, but Ed, I'm pretty sure yeah, Ed won that heat. Yeah, yeah, and Ellis was further down. Um, Ashe did pretty well in that. Uh, now I'm I'm curious, were the women and the men judged in the same? Yeah, so so like, this is like one of the standard criticisms of Red Bull is that you get let's say four women in a competition placed against men. And then when it's like, if you're looking at it purely from just like an athletic point of view, right? 
it's so easy to kind of go, oh, well, Ed's jump was bigger and right. therefore he gets more points. Yeah. And therefore like the girls find it far harder to, you know, compete on that same level. Right. Which is why in a lot of competitions like NAPC and things, you place the women versus the women and the men versus yes. the men. Because it, but we didn't have that in the first heat. They were it, all judged it, it, It's accordingly. the same across the whole thing. It's right. why Sydney, it's why like you've never ever seen a woman on the podium at Red Bull. There's always, right. there's always the best best woman yeah but there's never been a woman on the podium because they have to compete against the men yeah and they, they, it, like things like these are completely valid criticisms of this event and by no means have red bull sort of really addressed it or sorted it out um but to be fair we did have this very very long conversation on one of the nights about these exact topics yeah so yeah. it's like the conversations are taking place and it was why i was kind of because when I, I we like, we got invited to go, yeah. As all this stuff was kicking off, and I kind of was like, oh shit, I feel guilty going. But at the same time, like purely from a selfish perspective, right? I haven't left the country for two years. Yeah. You say you're going to pay me to go to a beautiful island with all of my friends who I haven't seen in two and a half years. Yeah. I'm going. Yeah. Like unless unless that's you know, it, obviously if there was crazy scumbaggery and like you know awful awful things happening. Yeah. But it's like, well, I'm I want to go and almost address these topics and like bring them up. And it, we, yeah, didn't even, exactly. we didn't even need to because they were brought up. Like yeah, there was it was scheduled. like, I, we weren't expect, you said on the first night when we hung out, you know, there's a bit of an elephant in the room, but then yeah. second night in, you know, we start having this conversation, these conversations. Yeah. And it was almost like, you know, and everyone was in the same, it was a small bar. Everyone was in the same room saying it was quiet. And, you know, they, we really all went into town to start talking about everything and having those conversations and you've got are of, so important and vital to people yeah. understanding and, and talking about these things. And there's kind of veterans like Lucy and, and Jesse and Jason Poole there, and then you've got Sydney and then you've got Noah and Lilu and things. Yeah. And it's like, not everyone was as vocal as each other, but it wasn't brushed under the... Because what, what I was kind of... I, I mean, I literally said this to Nico in that thing. I said it felt like Red Bull had kind of brushed it under the rug. Like they kind of just hadn't addressed a lot of the sexism stuff leading right. up to it. Yeah. And Nico quite rightly said, he was like, well, no one actually asked me. Like no one, he said, everyone chat shit, but no one came to me and said like, what's the deal with this? Yeah. And he said, if you'd asked me, I would have told you that it wasn't meant to be an art motion. Yeah. It was meant to be this. And this is why all this shit's like fucked up. So let's backpedal a little, little yeah, bit yeah. Back, <laughs> to, back to what the second heat was. Yeah. So then, then we had the spot challenge, which was where you and me came in. So yeah. we were invited out as film makers and that that, that was, was a, that was a cool format for that was, it was a competition mad like they built the equivalent of an art motion course across a load of rooftops amazing spots amazing mm. bars amazing like gaps <laughs> by bars I think, amazing bars yeah. get a drink on the course no, that, but, uh, well, like, but, bar sub, yeah. uh, and and the athletes had a day with us they had a three hour window in the morning and a three hour window in the afternoon. And, and each filmmaker got two athletes each. You got Lilo and Noah. I had Lilo and Noah. I got Shay. Yeah. I got. Te I technically got Aiden and Ellis and then Aiden got injured. So we replaced him with <laughs> Shay. So which was, which was very, uh, swapped out, swapped yeah. out the identical twin. Worked in your favor. Yeah. So they got three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon. And we got basically back to back to back to, it was the one of the hardest days of filming. Yeah. I've ever like, done. The, like the athletes got to have two hours in between their, three hours but for the filmmakers it was literally like three like three hours and then the next athlete comes straight onto the course and then it's like another three hours and then well, or two hours yeah and then you know it was just it was back to back for us but boiling sun yeah boiling yeah. hot sun and you As know filming cameras trying to think about your video exactly what you need to do for your concept and all of that stuff so so also something that was really interesting across all three heats but mostly these last two was that there were quite specific briefs with regards to what the athletes and also the filmmakers were asked to do. So in this one, we were explicitly told, like, you have to go out and you have to make a video. It has to be 45 to 60 seconds long. And it has to be in the confines of this area, which was mm. a really good space. It's kind of hectic. There's a lot, of, lot going on. Um, but the it could have a concept and you will get like... It was 15%, wasn't it? Yeah, 15% on the concept. Was was based on the filmmaking, the concept and everything else. So mm. like whatever Sam could bring to the table with his videos would only score 15% of the total points compared yeah. to what Lila or Noah brought to the table. Same with me and Alice and, yeah. and Shay. Um, which is why you saw some people perform better points wise. Like, I mean, so for me, for example, I was kind of shitting it going into this because I feel like I'm somewhat of a retired filmmaker. 
I'm also not really a creative filmmaker. I'm not that. This is not true, by the way. But this I'm is not, imposter syndrome. Yeah, but compared to like people like you and like Camille's video and stuff like that, you know, I'm like, right. my level of like creative talent is far below some of the other guys. So what I did is I just went, well, I'm just going to play to my strengths and I've got these two young guns. I'm just going to show parkour in the best light possible and yeah. have no concept. Which is its own style in the first place. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It takes skill to really just shoot parkour so that you can really see what's going on. In yeah, no, I'll, I'll agree. I feel like I'm pretty good at that. What I unintentionally did there is I maximized, like, let's say out of that, like, 85% or whatever <clears throat> I maximise the amount we could get there because you just yeah. unleash Ellis on bars and film <laughs> yeah. that and then that 15% like maybe mine didn't score so high there but we scored really high in that which is why Ellis went from being like I think like 5th or 6th in the first round Yeah, I think he came in 2nd Yeah, by the end of the the second night Yeah, um, and, and we, had, is, we, we had 24 hours to edit these videos it was pretty sick oh, it, like, was, it was an intense two days like it was really like Shoot and edit. run and gun and yeah. then like work hard but this is also why ed um you know he ed didn't actually get top five no because so he obviously the concept for their video was awesome which was a whole one uh, a well, one shot through so the entire course this is a really interesting thing that i've had a couple of messages on instagram about because i yeah. put that poll up a lot of people were really confused. They said like a why, because they didn't, a lot of people don't know about these three formats. And yeah. they're like, why have some people released one clip, yeah. i.e. the exploration challenge? Mm -hmm. And why have some people released full videos? Yeah. And it's because like Ed hasn't released his video yet. Travis hasn't released his video yet. Yeah. I think Ellis hasn't, Shay hasn't, uh, like Noah released hers obviously. So there's yeah. a lot of confusion around that. So a lot of you guys haven't seen and probably will in the next couple of days, these videos which yeah. made up 33.3% of the total scores. Yeah, exactly. Um, but as Sam was saying, Ed did this one shot, which I can let you carry on. Yeah, no, so so Ed and Ryan's idea, if you don't know Ryan, he's a, an amazing filmmaker who, you know, got to, got to work with, but um, their, their concept for the video was a, a one shot through the entire course. And that's a great concept. Yeah. But that only takes 15% of the overall score. Yeah, they killed and it. And what they're, they killed it on the video. Like, it's so sick to watch. Like, it's a great video. But then, because Ed's trying to do a run through the entire course, he had to maybe downgrade, downgrade on the level of movement. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, and he like literally did, didn't he? Because like- He had to, because, you know, he's trying, he's going down the entire course. The full run was, what, like 60 seconds they, overall? It was, it was, I think, technically over slightly and they had to like yeah they had to trim like down, trim, like do some trim down ramps what, a little bit. yeah because it was and it was and he initially was doing like a running pre to a rudy and then he made it like a running pre side out because he was yeah. getting fucking tired to yeah. nail this one shot so if you compare alice's to ed's movement you know and and seeing as how you're you're marking the scores as well ed's not going to score as high as someone like alice yeah do you know what i mean on that challenge so that so yeah so going into the final day like ellis was leading Travis ended up winning that because honestly, like I have worked with Travis a lot over the last couple of years. You'll, you've seen, he can kind of have his mental battles and things. You'll see it in soul. Like he, we talk about that a lot. He can be not the fastest guy. Like even on the first day, of the exploration challenge, he battled that double Kong, yeah. which apparently that scored him really high points. Yeah. Um, horrible double Kong. At oh, it was awful. Like, I can't even believe it. Travis banged the Kong Prix within seconds and then like battled this double Kong, which is just, fucking high up and hot, like white slippery walls. Yeah. And on a hot, a hot blistering day as yeah. well, which was very impressive. But so he, I have never seen him. Oh, I think Boggy just died. <laughs> just on the mess. <coughs> uh, I've never seen him that on point. Like yeah. He was working with Ryan and he just went from challenge to challenge to everywhere I looked, Travis was like, oh, there's something I can do. Ryan, yeah. film it. Boom, boom. Yeah. Horrible roof gaps, big flips. Uh, like he fucking corks a huge gap yeah, and then immediately double corks out. Like, so he, he came through with like top, top marks on that video. Yeah. It was more like Ellis's that was just like a power video. Yeah. But like for, for, for Travis's and Ryan's video, like that probably scored high on concept because it was a great video. Oh, uh, yeah. Ryan's very definitely scored high on, on movement as well because yeah. Travis threw the fuck down and it wasn't, you know, what Travis brought, which I'm not going to name it as UK style, but you know, he really brought a bit of parkour. Yeah. And a bit of, you know, obviously the Well, sort of apparently what they, what the judges so. also looked for was um, like use of spots. Yes, so of like the environment. If you, for example, Ellis did like, I think like three lines on the bars, whereas Travis kind of used the entire environment. Yeah. Like they're going to 
benefit. You're gonna you're gonna be benefited. You're gonna score there. better as well. Yeah. Uh, this because this is the thing. It's like, and it, we're gonna talk about this a lot when it comes to the live aspect. But people watch it and they take it at face value. Mm. Like they go, oh, that's a run. That was the most impressive bit to me. Yeah. But actually when it comes to judging, to try and make judging as fair as possible, you have to almost break it down to criteria. Yes. Now there needs of, to be objective criteria for it really to be judged, you know, effectively. Yeah. And a lot of people assumed this year it was just the creativity, execution, flow and difficulty. But, but it was it, There was some extra stuff that the judges con- were considering. Yeah. Which is why we'll, we'll go on to talk about this. The whole Ellis and Ed debate comes up. Right. Um, but yeah, so Travis ended up smashing that and that was just, yeah, crazy hard work. And that night was so nice because the, the night we, we finished the videos and then we're, we're rush, literally rushing. Went to straight them. to the edit room and we're all just sitting in there, like <laughs> creating proxies, like trying to go through selects to, because we know the next day, you know, our edit's got to be in by three and we all want to. We've all got ropey know. laptops and we're like trying to export oh these things. Oh my gosh, like, yeah. That was Great. funny. Everyone's fans are just like booming off because we filmed like what, 4K, 100 frames per second. And yeah, yeah. Some laptops just couldn't handle that. Apart What's, from Camille's Mac Mini, which yeah. you know, he, he finished that, his video like that night. Yeah, No, yeah. no, no. Ryan, Ryan finished, finished his. both videos that night. He's, yeah. He's a weapon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. absolute weapon. What, what is cool is Red Bull are making a documentary about the whole behind the scenes yeah. of this event, which I think will explain a lot more it's yeah. just a shame that that clarity wasn't there beforehand and actually some of those well, that's a really good thing to mention because actually a lot of those conversations that we had were actually filmed and oh yeah yeah yeah. what i i feel sorry for whoever's editing that video because there were cameramen filming the entire time like non-stop and they've got to take it into 20 minutes yeah so i'm hoping you know i don't know what their brief is but i'm hoping they can include some of those relevant conversations we had because for I think that vid- that that film could actually do a little bit of hand holding, taking mm. people more into the process, you know, and seeing it. I think for me personally, seeing the inside, um, it's just crazy to see how many moving parts there are. Oh, it's and, yeah. You know, it's it's incredible how many people are involved. What it all takes to make an event like that happen, and and I'm not even like I, I when I say this like. There were so many moving parts. It's a, it's such a complex thing. And it's so to easy to make even, happen. Even the live stream, which we'll go on to the yeah. TikTok thing, we'll, we'll talk about that. Even that was so much bigger. Yeah, the operation, and we, yes. did, we, we've got. Oh no, you didn't have the fucking headset on. No, but you did. Yeah, yeah, fuck. <coughs> but like, I think one of the biggest things, and I'll say this now, but like, I think we'll probably repeat it near the end. Is is in my opinion, this shouldn't have been an art motion. Mm. In my opinion. This should this event should be refined, and I know that they they said they're using this as almost like a test. Yeah. Like they should refine this event and yes. make it its own thing, because the creative aspect, working with filmmakers, yeah. like everyone who took part in the video side of things, I think enjoyed it more than any other competition. Yeah, and also when we watched the videos, everyone's cheering along, yeah. and also we knocked out like really really fucking good videos. Yes in 48 hours and yes. it shows what you can actually do if you put your fucking nose I mean, in the grindstone. I mean, something we said is that like, we're trying to grow this sport together, right? And what is really cool was witnessing how powerful we were as a unit in order to like create, you know, these awesome videos with these with these athletes doing well, it was these like things. It was like 16 minutes total of like game changingly good footage. Yes, like yes. Really and we, we banged it out shit. in two days and it's like, what harnessing that level of creativity and skill in people and trying to do that more, not only in Red Bull, but just across the board in other formats of, you know, jam or competition, you know, in different places, it's so possible to create more content to put out there to, to help grow it. You well, know this, what I mean? And it doesn't this have to thing. just be art of motion. Yeah. It doesn't have to be art of motion. And this was the thing that we spoke about a lot because we talked about the whole like equal pay for women in competition and stuff like this. And also like athletes themselves, just more people getting paid in competition. Mm. And Jason kind of raised this point of like, well, if you look at it from Red Bull as a big money perspective, yes, they've got this huge budget, but also they're going to try like the re you get rich by being frugal mm. often, right? Like you, you make, you sort of, you attain wealth by keeping it. Like if you spend frivolously, it's very hard to hold on. It's yeah. the same for business. So like businesses will always look to minimize their expenses. And it's why like this event was not just funded by Red Bull. They had other sponsors yeah. and things. Like yeah. they'll try and get money to do these things. So they spend as little as possible. Yeah. Now, if they, as Jason said, if they only have to pay three grand to get the best athletes in the world to compete, mm. they're only going to pay three grand. Yeah. 
And the problem is by doing that, they kind of set this precedent and it's like, well, that's the standard. And they know now that like Ed Scott's still going to rock up if the prize money's only three grand. Right. It's not like suddenly everyone starts boycotting that. Yeah. And it's, it's the same for like the sort of the, because, because we, a lot of us, and I, I, I'm fully sort of my, my standpoint is like, because somebody said like, who in this room thinks that women should be paid equally and fucking every single hand went up. But you get these events where it's like, well, they're not going to do that, but people still kind of go to them. And it's mm. like, we, we can try and change that. But at the same time, it's like, we have the power to do this shit ourselves. Yes. And like we, the, one of the big things we were talking about is just like, and, and I won't, you'll remember this, but I won't say who is doing this, but like there are talks of other competitions and events being created that are, I mean, there's basically, uh, there are a couple of people talking about one that they are in the works of sorting out. And I think they might even be getting, Sp- sort of other sponsorship from companies yeah. involved that's very, very female centric, um, very, very focused around that. And it's like, they're doing it. Yeah. They have the power and yeah. they are doing it and they're making it happen because yeah. they want to see change and they're doing it. The, the easiest thing to do is sit on the internet and just argue about it. Yeah. But it's like, we have the power to say, okay, like if Motus is going to hold a competition, we're going to set the precedent yeah. that men and women will be paid equally. Yeah, Boom, yeah, yeah. Done. And like, we have that fucking power and it's like no one there and even no one in part of Red Bull is saying like, oh, you can't start a competition. Yeah. You shouldn't do this. And it's it's right what you said, because everyone sitting in that room who was working towards, you know, making the content happen and making it all happen, everyone there, 100%, the money is not the only motivator. Money you know, helps, it's a good bonus, but everyone there 100% wants to help grow the sport and wants to be involved in the sport. And I think something that would be cool to see is, you know, also moving moving away from the sort of competition format Mm -hmm. and just finding new ways to get people together to make make great things happen. And that's one of the 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 other big things that we spoke about was just like what, other projects can we be creating yeah. as as sort of influential people within the community that yeah aren't just a live event yeah because if i'm if i'm going to be honest the the part of the competition that i found one the most fun and two had seemed to have the most focus on it and everyone to be, was really involved in was the second heat yeah the spot was, challenge. was was the spot challenge the filmmaker and the uh, and the athlete dynamic and those final videos you know and that, although that kind of was being judged and was in a competition format, that in itself was just such a fun, you know, And the judges said it do. was fucking hard to judge because it's still like- Oh yeah, it's subjective in their judging, you know. But also like, because everyone had the same parameters, i.e. time and location, Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the playing field is sort of somewhat level. It's not like, oh, Ellis had access to bars, but Travis didn't or something like that. Um, and also, even though, yes, it might have taken someone three attempts to nail that line yeah. in the video, everyone was under the same time constraints. Yeah. And everyone understands that when you're making a video, like you don't land everything first try anyway. And yeah. also in competition, you either do something that you know you're going to land or you don't land it. So yeah. it's like, it's not like anyone watching those videos was like, ah, oh, they had fucking, you know, three months and 2000 attempts to get that line perfect. Yeah. Every, like, um, but that's more, that's also more to the truth of what training's actually exactly. like, you know, like a competition format, you know, you have one, you know, you have a few hours to think about one run and then you have to do that run one time and then you're judged on that. It's like, no, well, that's cool. But really what training is, is you go out with some friends, you train a little bit, you try your run a few times and when you're ready, you get someone to film it and then and, and, you put it in an edit or you put it on Instagram. And that's what the second heat was. And it felt it felt normal. It felt like yeah. what we should be doing. And it you know felt I mean? so like celebrated that night. It was really fucking cool. Oh, it was, be- it was a beautiful thing watching everyone's, you know, screening the films and, you know, some of the athletes, you know, said a few things about their film before it, but it was wholesome. It was yeah, wholesome yeah. and it was actually quite inspiring to see how good the content actually was and Sam, the fact that you did it in two days. I have to say, Sam fucking killed. So Sam went into this thing not knowing basically anyone, uh, like you barely met half those people, right? right yeah. And like, you got Lilu and uh, and Noah, and yeah. Lilu's one in particular. You, the, the, you'll, oh, the video is live. Yeah, so they, they you had can this, see it. They had Instagram this or her Instagram. outfit change concept, and like everyone was kind of aware that Lilu kept changing outfits throughout the day, and everyone kind of got an idea of what was going to be happening. Yeah, but it was so. I'm just like, I honestly think you were the perfect pairing for her. Like the the 
the final output was so fucking good. Yeah, and it was we, like, had, we had that, a good dynamic. And everyone lost their shit when it aired because it was like, you see snippet, you see like Sam and Lily running around and some, she's wearing red and then she's wearing blue and you yeah. see Sam chasing them with the camera. And then you see the final thing and it was like, it was just super, super sick. It was super fun making it. And, you know, I said when, when, when I walked out and, you know, saw that those two were going to be my athletes, the first thing I said was, oh damn, like I've got the we're, the, we're the most stylish trio by far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, because Lily throughout the entire time where everyone was saying like, damn, like, Outfit's sick today, this outfit's sick today. So, you know, it was her idea actually to do that concept, you know, with uh, with changing outfits. And I guess I just worked to make that happen. But as you said, this was, you know, I've seen with, with Motus, you give the guys, you, you've given guys opportunity like Keelan and Max and Luke and whoever else is in Motus. I've seen you give them these opportunities to go to these events and to have these experiences and to be involved in that way. And for me, you know, a lot of those guys who are there at Red Bull are people I've looked up to from, you know, when I started, you know, when I was growing up in the sport and it was so cool. Now, you know, you giving me the opportunity to come on board and to be part of that and also be at an age now where I'm just kind of hanging out with people. Yeah, Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. The whole kind of like uh, super, superiority complex way out the window. Everyone's just human. Everyone's just doing their thing. But yeah, it was a, it was a great experience to be involved in. And I think for me, I had such an amazing time on the inside and it's really, it's a real difficult thing to know that there's so much criticism and so much hate towards something like that. Because obviously, you know, we're, we need to talk about these things in order to grow and to make it better and to discuss things that are not on and s things that are not working. But at the same time, as I said about all the moving parts, like you've also got to realize how hard it is to put on one of these events. And of course, there's always going to be problems. I just hope that people can also focus on, and this might be the rose tinted glasses, but I hope pe people can also focus on the fact that this is just something that has been done for the community and is for the community and has to, you know, you've got to take your due, dil due diligence to, th to see that this is also a good thing and yeah, it's and beneficial I, for I think the sport. Like there will always, always be the aspect of like, well, it's, you know, it's marketing for Red Bull, it's media. It's like, it's, you know, they're, they're just putting money in so they can get marketing out the other side. And it's like, well, yes, that's what companies do. Yeah. But at the same time, that's it's like- economy. Yeah, that and that's what any any kind of business getting involved in the sport is going to be doing that to a degree. And yes, the Red Bull product is not sort of great. Like I don't enjoy kind of- necessarily drinking it nor do I guzzle it down and I don't think it's like it's well, we not did on the, we did on this trip I was pretty I was pretty restrained um, but it's not it's not sort of yeah then no one can be like oh Red Bull's fucking really healthy like give it to kids <laughs> things. Um, but it's like at the end of the day they are providing opportunities and there's very few large companies like this that are actually doing that and yes yeah. we could say oh boycott Red Bull and, and wait for the better opportunities, you know, wait for yeah. fucking Nature Valley to come along and do it or whatever. Yeah. But it's like, well, every other single sport in the world yeah. has Red Bull probably is one of their biggest funders, like Formula One, like skateboard. Yeah. Like, there's all these things where it's like Red Bull are pumping money in and they're providing incredible Without Red Bull, we wouldn't have support to grow the community, to do, you know, to do some of these things. Like it's, it, and, and that's in for, that's for a lot of other extreme sports as well. And yeah, it's, it's like at the end of the day, external money coming in is it's if it can keep athletes training and yeah. growing and therefore growing the sport, it all kind of does, it, it does help. And, and it's not, there's no perfect kind of answer to that. And I know yeah. that that's kind of us just being like, oh, it's fine, it's money. But yeah. um, one thing I did want to clarify just because I saw it down here is there was this other thing called the People's Challenge, which was like the public vote. Mm. That was taken from the clips on the first day. The athletes were allowed to choose one of them to be voted on. Yeah, uh, DK ended up winning that. Apparently with about, I think out of like 19,000 votes, he got about 14,000, yeah. which shows how strong the Greek hometown audience yes. is. People or, love DK. Or he just set some like bops on it or something. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so that, yeah. that, but that, that didn't actually have any effect on the, the final sort of scores. Yeah. Um, I just want to double check my Instagram, uh, questions just in case there's anything that we have covered that I should clarify. I mean, I also wanted to say that, you know, there's, there's been a lot of things that people, you know, are criticizing about this event. And I think that's a very positive thing because it, Ideally, from what I could see from, 
you know, the guys who are running this event, they're taking on those criticisms and thinking about how they can grow and make it better for the future. So ideally it's an upwards, it's an upwards, you know, whatever. Yeah. It's, it's upwards from here. Like, and you know, in those conversations, I feel like there's maybe this idea that, um, you know, Red Bull, they don't really care about their athletes. They don't really care about the community and they don't really care about what's going on. That's, but, a, that's a big thing that comes up here. It's just like, yeah. Um, the involvement in those, in those conversations, you know, everyone's speaking, you know, the female athletes, the, the male athletes, the judges, the filmmakers, everyone together who is a moving part in this together, talking about one, how we can help to grow the sport about, about what we're doing, what we were doing there. And, and, you know, the sexism talk and everything with everyone having a voice to speak and them actually making sure that everyone had a voice to speak was, you know, a really beautiful thing to see. So I think it's a, I think it's going to be a positive progression and I think it, it, it is progressive. So yeah. Um, hopefully see that for the next one. So there's a good few questions that are like, in general, does Red Bull give a shit or are they just in it for the promo? And I think there are levels to it because obviously there's going to be execs at the top who just want it for the promo. Like there's a reason that this thing wasn't going to be an art motion and mm. then got turned into one because it's like, oh, if we're going to put money into it, we need to use the art motion name. So yeah. like, yes, there is that aspect. Yeah. Uh, but there are people who are involved sort of further down the line and, and more involved. And then all the way down to like, you know, Nico and people who Nico like doesn't work for, he's not part of Red Bull. Red Bull he's one, commissioned to Red this, Bull, one yeah. of his clients. Um, and there's people like that who care hugely, hugely, hugely. And people like Frosty, and, and I, I want to say some things about Frosty and his commentary and, and stuff because there's a lot of criticism around that in a bit. Um, but these people really, really do care and have provided yeah. far more opportunities for people than you, like the average person, is aware of. Yeah. Um, and and it's it's tough because, yes, this event specifically did feel quite exclusive. I looked at the list of people who were invited, like filmmakers, and I was like, why? Mm. Like, kind of, like, why is this person being brought on as a filmmaker or whatever? But, like, when you actually think about if this wasn't meant to be an art motion and if they were the people organizing it were trying to... Like, if you said, Giles, build a team out of people that you know you can trust and rely yes, on... that's essentially for what a project. Did, like, yeah. if you said, Giles, bring in people all new fresh faces because I, I had some sort of internal criticisms of like there should be more like young blood fresh faces like more progression mm. in this lineup which is obviously where things like the on-site and things can be really good yeah but if you strip that back and you say well actually if the focus was to be like uh like to, to safely and reliably know that you're going to get yeah. eight really good filmmakers who can actually deliver in 48 and hours. And you can communicate with them with, cause you've worked with them before exactly. within this realm. Yeah. Um, then Same with the judges as well. Yeah. And if you ask me to do that, I would probably come up with a similar list yeah. because it's like, okay, well I know these people can meet that mark. Mm -hmm. Whereas some of these sort of younger people or, or fresh faces that I it, in some ways would love to have involved in a slightly more high stakes environment like this. Yeah. You don't know that. So but it's like- they, they were fostering young talent as well. I mean, look at like the ages of the athletes who are involved. Yeah, for sure. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Those, those are young, hungry athletes who are looking, you know- And they've you, proven their fucking point because it's like, you yeah. get, I mean, Ellis is just, he is one of the most unbelievable people I've ever worked with. And it's, they work hard. Like I was working with Noah, you know, she's 17 years old and- Every single time before, like she would, when she was doing a run, she was like, oh, I've drilled this, you know, before this, so, you know, I'm ready to do this. She, oh, she was so scared of doing the swing double fly. Yeah. And that process of her really, really pushing I mean, herself she just trains, shows how much effort she puts in into this. She, she trains like an athlete, straight yeah. up. Like she doesn't it's train. It's a similar vibe to Ed, you exactly. know, Ed's like a, like, like he is an athlete and yeah. I, I got that vibe from her as well. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like one of the questions was like, how was the qualification process? It's like, well, in this case, there wasn't so much of one because like- uh, Yeah, uh, we like drilling, drilling that point, sorry to, uh, drilling no, no. that point again, this wasn't meant to be yeah. an art of motion competition. This was meant to be a project of people getting together to make, you know, something cool to get funding. They had to call it art of motion and therefore they had to bring in the competition aspect. But by that point they had already chosen- Yeah what athletes they wanted to get in for that project. So that's why there wasn't- And that's, that's, that's wasn't like, the, that's the too long didn't read. Like that's the summary of this entire thing. Yeah. Is if it hadn't have been called Art of Motion and it had been called something else and there was a bit more handholding about the format, yes. I think a lot of this confusion wouldn't be there. I mean, I could, I, I mean, I would have done, done that myself just in terms of marketing. It's like for, you know, putting out a video or a trailer or a promo for the competition, 
really explaining the three heats and why they're doing these three heats. Yeah. I mean, that would have just been a cool video. One, because I feel like the three heat process and the dynamic of, of the format is something kind of innovative. I haven't really seen other things like that. Mm. Well, I mean, other it's because obviously like Own the Spot existed and they, like, yeah. they, they've, they've clearly borrowed elements from different things here. But... Uh, and then we did the King's Day video for Red Bull a few years ago. Yes, I saw that, that. That thing. So like, it's nothing new necessarily, but it's been put together in a really like nice package. Do you think that they almost were trying to go for another King's Day project? I think not necessarily just that. I think it, I think basically if we'd taken out the live challenge yeah. and made it more video based and more like, you know, content clips based. Yeah. and then also talks, I think that would have been the final thing from what it sounds yeah. like. Um, and it, it all just obviously changed. But um, shall we, uh, what, there was something. Uh, I mean, some more questions would be cool because we're kind of taking in, you know, what, what people think from the outside. So, yeah, so we'll talk know, about if there's any questions we can sort of answer, then let's we'll try. We'll talk about the stream in a minute. Somebody said winning our emotion doesn't mean anything in terms of one's parkour career. Like, and do. I mean, look at DK, look at other people who have won. It really ships. It didn't used to, and it still, it like, the biggest thing is over the years you have seen people win our emotion and then just fade away. And like mm. you, then you've had people like Corey, I mean, like, so Corey is a really sort of, I guess, close to home one because he won our emotion. And then I toured with him for like a year and I saw how his mindset was. And it was like, I've won our emotion, which is a Red Bull event. And I've watched all my like friends and people that I care about win other events like X games. Mm. And they get like, you know, a check for five and like 500 grand mm. and they suddenly get sponsored by Nike. I've won our emotion and my entire life has not changed. Right. And you can get quite a lot of resentment like that. Yeah. Like things are definitely improving with regards to how much media and attention you get if you win our emotion. Yeah. But it is not going to change your life forever. No. Like, and the money won't change your life but forever. But that's also because it's parkour. Yeah. And, and it's not one of those sports where it's big enough yet that you win a competition, boom, like everyone sees it, Nike sees it, suddenly you're getting a sponsorship deal for and, this. And also and that. a lot of these things are like, they're, they're step up boards for you to then, it's it's the same with anything in life. Like I, I once met a woman who won a Cannes Film Festival. Oh cool. Uh, she won a film, when I worked at Apple, I was selling her a computer and chatting to her for ages about Sick. it. And she said like, she won, she, she made this film and it won an award and there was a ton of hype and exposure, mm -hmm. but everyone wants to know what was next. Yes. And, and she hadn't started working on anything. So she had all this interest, like, oh my God, you're an amazing filmmaker. What's next? Yes. And by the time she finally got something out, all the hype had People gone. have forgotten. So it's like, you have you to have use- You have to capitalize on the fact that, oh cool, I've won Art of Motion. Uh, I've done this. People, like, people are watching me. Yeah. What am I going to do? I need, I need to capitalize on and this focus. that is the time to start. Like, even if you're fucking literally sending out emails being like, hey, do you want to sponsor me? Hey, do you want to- work on this yeah. like, and we we spoke at one of the talks we talked about uh one of the evenings was was a lot about actually how much work you need to be putting in like no one's you gonna, can't be complacent yeah no one's gonna hold your fucking hand like if you win an art emotion or if you i mean lilu for example like jumping manpower yeah uh they were saying how like she's like just furiously kind of almost sending out emails and things like she's putting in that work to make these connections yeah. because it's like she's got a lot of media attention on her at the moment but it doesn't mean that it's just coming all like she needs to basically put in a bit of work herself. Yeah, you can't, I think that was something, uh, I can't remember who talked about it. Maybe it was Frosty about, you know, athletes when they do get sponsored or something like that. Maybe a little bit of complacency coming in like, oh, okay, I've made it now. A hundred percent. I'm sponsored, I get opportunities and money, but it's like, no, because then you become complacent and you don't work as hard and you stop being hungry and you actually, your attitude gets worse. Yeah. And it means that, you know, once, once you lose that kind of grind and that, that hunger, then you can fall off. You can fall off the train and, and that's obviously not really what you want. Yeah. A hundred percent. How much in your opinion, should we give attention to our emotion despite them not having a focus on supporting the community? I.e. not as wom many women as men making the whole thing exclusive as fuck. I mean, I've, we've touched on the exclusive thing. Uh, not as many women as men, it's a hundred percent something that needs to be improved upon. Mm. And like I said, there were these conversations happening. I don't necessarily know if that is going to change anything, mm. but at the same time, it's tough. Like how much attention should you give it as much as you want? Yeah. Like at the end of the day, it's Red Bull aren't going to stop doing it unless the attention dies out. And also it is still a 
progressive event for yeah. the sport as a whole. Uh, I, I mean, I would, I would love to see it being less focused. I know I've, I've kind of said this already, but for me, my experience, I barely thought about the fact that any of it was being judged. And I more thought of it, of the fact that, okay, cool. These creatives are working with these athletes and look, we've made a, a fuck ton of really, really cool content. That's what shone through for me. And yeah. I think for the future, less focus on compa like comparing female and male athletes to get scores to win and more let's combine to make something really, really cool. I mean, I don't know how that, like what that would even look like and how that would work. But I want to, like, that's what shone through for me. That's what was special for me. And the, that's what was sentimental for me taking, like, coming away from it. The, the video side of things, like that second day, it didn't really feel like there was any, like, when it comes to a live event and you have Ed Scott following up sort of Noah or something, mm. it's kind of, or like, let's say Ellis following up Noah. Noah does swing dub, Ellis does full full or something. You can obviously go, like, you can you can make those comparisons and it's yeah. like, ah, fuck, like, we, we shouldn't be judging these two people in the same box yeah. kind of thing. But when it came to the video side of things, because it was broken down to like each personal video, like even though maybe Ellis's movement in his video was harder than Lilu's, And yeah. yes, in this situation, they were judged on the same level. And maybe yeah. that shouldn't be the thing. It didn't feel like anyone actually, like Noah's video or, or Lilu's video or whatever was just as fucking sick yeah. because it was this like collaborative piece of art that, is so, is so I mean, what would be cooler is next time doing that kind of format. Maybe it's like 50% concept, 50% movement. It means it gives more pressure to the filmmaker in a, in a good way. It's yeah. like you're, you're being actually, you're, you're a bit more of a focus on this. And so it's a bit more of a collaboration. And, you know, what was hard is that the judges had to, you know, there were, there were objective things to judge upon. But the fact that the criteria for the film and the movement was so subjective, it made it hard to com like contrast and compare. Yeah, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, Can you hear that? Can you hear that little beep, beep, beep? No. Okay, just me then. Oh, sorry for the burp. Um, should we talk about the life challenge? Yeah. Uh, I mean, most of the questions are actually just complaints about TikTok. <laughs> what, like, just like, why the fuck was it on TikTok? My, my assumption, <laughs> I'm, I'm assuming here that the reason it was on TikTok is probably because there was funding involved. Like yeah. one, TikTok is an incredibly fast growing platform that a billion people are moving over to. It's massive. It's undeniably popular right now. And therefore as a streaming platform, like, yes, it's not great for streaming, but that's the way things are going. Like, uh, I, Well, there's more, I think there's more focus and funding on Instagram, uh, not on, on TikTok lives right now than there are on Instagram lives. Yeah. And it's like, and Facebook live is, I mean, it was on Facebook live, but it was a, I think a thing like a 40 minute delay. Yeah. Um, and yes, it could have gone on YouTube and things, but I, I mean, whoever's decision that was, I'm assuming there was sort of, you know, oh, well, we'll get this much fun, extra funding if TikTok do it or hit yeah. there's this benefit of this. And also I know that this was one of the first like live stream mobile phone things that I think Red Bull have done. Yeah. And therefore I think maybe they're just testing new technology. I mean, and also, you know, I know uh, Vanessa who trains in the community, but her job is literally doing live streams for TikTok. And yeah. she gets, you know, th there's money. Yeah, there's money in it, you know, so. Yeah, and um. I mean, so, so I was one of the filmers who was allocated to basically be a live stream cameraman. We were given these like crazy phones that had this app on them that was never like, I never had to like press record or anything. I just had to hold the camera uh, in vertical, which is insane if you think about it. a few years ago, like you'd get hated on for filming a vertical video. Yeah. Um, like do I, do I think TikTok was the best choice? I don't know. I haven't watched a huge amount of the stream. Apparently it was a bit, hard to see some things uh, that could just be because I'm shit filming or whoever was <laughs> the angle it felt. And also I could literally, well, you can't see shit. You look at an yeah. iPhone screen in the light all the entire time. I couldn't see anything. On you the just got to point it in the direction and hope you're Which capturing. is quite intuitive because you're on wide angle. Yeah. So for the most part, it felt all right. Um, but so I've got this phone. I've got another phone on my pocket, which has got headphones attached to it. Yeah. In my ears, I can not only hear Frosty speaking, but I can hear some of the Red Bull team who were on the island and also 
people in an office in Austria, in a studio in Austria mm -hmm. with, we got sent a photo of the studio. It's like the size of this room, many, many monitored, like a proper TV studio, yeah. loads of screens. Uh, and they are, they're like switching between audio feeds and camera feeds. Yeah. There's a delay on it in case of swearing. Although apparently I kept getting told off for fucking swearing. <laughs> They're so bad, like, cause I Ellis- Kept getting get told off a fucking swear. Yeah, Ellis did like full him back out. And I think I was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And then like a few minutes later, they're like, hey Giles, can you uh, stop cursing? Can you tone down on the cursing blue? Like, sorry. Um, well, that, yeah, that's crazy that they had all the way in where? Sorry. Austria. In Austria. So beaming to Austria. They're like resetting my phone in my hand. Like it comes up and says like, phone is under remote control because the feed will lag and they'll be like, okay, like cut off Giles. And they'll be like coming to you Giles, like number three. And they're like, yeah. stay, stay on the athlete. And they're like, get the athlete to stand in front of the wall and things. So I'm like, and they're doing this to all the other cameramen on the course. Yeah. Uh, we're obviously trying to stay out of the athlete's way, not get in the way, which I think we did a pretty good job of. I didn't hear or see of any big things. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty, pretty wild. But apparently yeah. this, I think I've never, ever, ever seen a good live stream. No, they're, a, they're a hard thing to pull off. I've never anything live is a hard thing to pull yeah, off. Yeah, um, and I think it sounds like it was okay. Like mm. I don't think it was great, but it sounds like it kind of did the job. Yeah, I think the biggest criticism is that it didn't have any communication, or not there wasn't much communication of the sort of format of the judging, etc. Yeah. In it, like even at the beginning, to be like these are the athletes' current scores. Yeah, this is how like for people to know that. Travis has this many points and he only needs this many points to win would have been a great thing just to say or talk about, you know, so maybe what? if you guys had been briefed to actually talk about the previous days and the scoring while on live. Do you yeah. Know what I mean? well, what, what normally happens is they broadcast it out through Red Bull TV and then yeah. also to like this, like Greek TV channel. And therefore they would have a presenter, you know, talk to the camera before explain yeah. the thing they'd have, they'd film the, they'd release videos like, in the build up, and that would explain all that. This year, as far as I'm aware, it pretty much went like live and straight into runs. Yeah. So a lot of that was down to Frosty. I don't know what Frosty was briefed on to say. Um, but the, uh, so one thing I will say is like Frosty every year gets so much criticism for his like description of moves. And they'll be like, oh, he said a cork was this or blah, 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 right. blah. He's not perfect because no one is perfect. And it is. So like I being a sort of, you know, sarcastic Englishman mm. who sometimes takes the piss out of Americans, sometimes, yeah, hear stuff that sort of someone like Frosty would say and be like, oh, it's a bit like, you know, yeah. but I've tried doing live commentary. I did it for NAPC yeah. to speak coherently and consistently about a run as yeah. it's happening it's hard. and be accurate is fucking hard. Hard. Yeah, it's, yeah. And as the sport is progressing, like Archie does something and you're like, what the fuck yeah, was that? Yeah, what even was that? Like, do you know what I mean? And how do you even explain it before he's already doing the next thing and it's too late? Yeah, it's so- I mean, like if I'm trying to think of one of the moves he does, it's like that A twist, like, but the and first half he's of done, it is tucked and then he opens- And, and already he's done three more moves by the yeah. time you said that. Like I can't, I can't even explain, think of how to explain it and no one's got a, 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 a catalog. No. Do you know what I mean? Like explaining what, what all the moves are what Frosty, to say them. It, what Frosty is so good at is he's very professional and he's very, like he's consistent and he's coherent and that's, that's like a skill and it's why he becomes reliable for Red Bull because yes, you could bring in like, you know, the, the, the parkour kid who's got the best knowledge of everything mm but maybe that parkour kid is also going to say some dumb shit in there yeah. and like fuck up and yeah. stuff like this. And it's like, it, they've got to pick the people that they can rely on for these things. Yeah. Um, I think, I think something that I get slightly um, just annoyed about in general is people who are just like highly, 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 highly critical of things, you know, like in, in this circumstance, okay, there's something happening in the community and, and it happened with the breach film as well. Like people would just shit on it and they it's get so easy. It's so easy. It's so easy to shit on something when you have no idea what it takes for something like that to actually happen. And like try doing anything to that scale yourself, like a bre like the, like breaches parkour film or, uh, you know, something as massive as that as a Red Bull and just look at how many mistakes you will make doing it. And also- And imagine having an entire community whose standards are for some reason ridiculously high. We don't have, why do we have the audacity to be so critical when it's a growing sport? We need to make mistakes in order to grow. People are like, 
you know, we're so unforgiving and we're so like harsh, but what we, what we really need is better, like wholesome dialogues on just figuring out how to make things better. And there's yeah. always going to be mistakes in doing something as massive as that. Yeah. That's that, it's just something that it just gets me a little bit riled up. It's like, can we, can we relax a little bit and actually be a bit more loving? Cause that's what it takes in order to grow, not just shitting on stuff. Cause without any of this, without long format parkour pieces, which we judge to share without competitions, which we judge to share without jams, brands, there's nothing that this and even move, like, I am fucking very guilty about shitting on styles of movement as, as I did a few weeks ago. And it's like, even stuff like it's that. Fun it's to, like, <laughs> yeah, I say it's, but it's so fun and easy to shit on everything. That's you know? the problem. And also it's so easy to surround yourself with like an echo chamber yes. of your friends, whether it's a WhatsApp group or my fucking absolute pet peeve is anyone who has a private Instagram. Uh, I think I've said this before. Anyone who has a private Instagram page or a, like a close friends group mm. and uses that close friends group to simply like create an echo chamber of the opinions that they right. like. Do you know if you, you've right. got an edgy opinion about something? Yeah, let's you, create an echo chamber of people you think will agree. Will agree, yeah. but never share criticism. And then you like somebody scream, like a fucking, cause it happened, like people chat shit about me and then somebody will screenshot it and send it to me. And it's like, I know that that person who's chatting shit about me is saying it to like 10 people who, who will agree will, with will them agree. because it's like, they get that little echo chamber. Yeah, but that's, and it's a, like that's fucking also put that shit public. Like, it's also a fundamental, you know, gossip is a fundamental yeah. way for us to like work as a species. Like say, you know, there's people working in a workspace and their boss is shit. They need to have gossip and to create those echo chambers to be able to progress as a workplace to get rid of that shit boss. It's the like, it's the weirdness though that like doing it on a, on a platform that's like a publicly sharing platform, but you kind of create that echo chamber like mm. within that space. And it's even it's even more extrapolated through things like social media where yeah. you can really, you know, easily get all of those people together to talk about something. And then once that's happened to actually put it out there in what, it, it, you know, in kind of subtle ways, kind of like, uh, like, digital bitchiness, you know, like passive aggression and then put it out and people will sort of like catch it's up just, to what you're trying like to say. It's like, if you've got an opinion, it's like you need to raise that point rather than just sort of, yeah. Just, yeah. And when I, when I said about like trying to be less harsh, I'm also playing devil's advocate to myself and be like, no, no, no. We also need to be very critical of these things in a, in a way that's like uh, progressive. So these things can actually grow because we need to be able to share criticisms for people to take it. Like Red Bull need to know that the sexism, yeah. it's not fucking on. And so we need to, we need to move in a way and we need to develop in a way so that that's not there anymore. The thing is, is that we know for a fact and can confirm that that is her, that message is her. Yeah, because every single the, person in that yeah. room went, yeah, we agree with this. Of course, like, yeah. And, and also the female athletes who are involved there had all the room to speak about this, do you know what I mean? Unfortunately, a lot, I think some of the female athletes there, uh, you know, maybe a bit younger, so didn't really know how to comment on quite a complex topic like that. Or even for a lot of the guys as well, like I didn't know how, like, yeah, also knew how like to speak, talk on a topic like that. And but, speaking in public is just so yeah, daunting yeah. as well. But like. I think I think the, op the message is heard and I think we can see progression for the future 100% in that realm. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm hoping for that. And, and as really we said, it's like, we have the power to make these changes ourselves in things that we control. Yes. It's like we, just because Red Bull don't pay female athletes equally doesn't mean that like we can't with a motor. We can't ourselves we set a president yeah. to then Exactly. Do it's, that. it's about setting precedent for like things and, and then, yeah. I mean, I'm so, so excited for uh, the feminine energy that's coming into the, the parkour scene because I don't, I don't think we've ever seen such an influx of female athletes. Uh, you know, we've got like a Max Henry's park, uh, what can Queen I City, Queen, Queen City. Yeah. Yeah. Queen City's coming, coming out. out. Uh, Rachel go, I know is hosting jams and garnering yeah. more female athletes to come together. And I think, I think it's really close in our future to start seeing a more female dominant, you know, a bit yeah, more yeah. female domination coming into this sport as well in their own way. Yeah. You know, and I think that's going to be really, it's so really sick. It's, it's, it's so sick it's to so see. Sick. I remember the days going out parkour training and there'd be one female athlete like Katie McDonald. Especially just in England. Like especially England, especially was, England. England always felt a bit slow, but it's getting there. And then sure. I, I go out the other day in Brighton and there's like almost an equal amount of female athletes and uh, yeah. male athletes and everyone's getting on and like the, the energy is high. And so, you know, it's, it's going to be good. Really it's sick. just it's just taking that influx of feminine energy and trying to put it into, I guess, a system that has only focused on 
you know, on a sport that is male dominated. Yeah. We've all got to grow and learn together. And this, this, this new age of, you know, uh, having more females involved, we're going to have to learn together of how we can involve them. Yeah. 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 And how it's all going to work. Yeah. As we sit here, two men. Yes. Dictating. Two white men. Dictating. This the is how the world will be. <laughs> <laughs> um, should we dive in on the live thing once mm. more with regards to, um, so I think one of the biggest criticisms aside from the live stream of the uh, TikTok was like, I mean, Travis is now, he put his, th like we, I sat next to him on the plane last night. He posted his love run. And by the time we landed, he had like hundreds of comments and so yes. many are literally like, you didn't deserve this. Yeah. And yeah. so to absolutely clarify, once again, there were three rounds. By the end of the first two, Travis was dominating. Travis had 12 points and the next athlete down had seven. Had I think. seven. So, so all Travis had to do was get four, get fourth. Yeah. Uh, so like I helped Travis prep his line and I was like, nah, mate, like he was going to do like cast gainer at the end. And we actually pulled that back because he was kind of freaked out by it. And Which he, it, he actually could seeing as he only needed to place fourth. Yeah. It you was, know, he, well, he it can was, compromise on that, you know? Yeah. It's the, the, he could take some of the pressure off. And then once I started seeing other people's lines in the comp, I was like, shit, like. <laughs> Trav, maybe you should have gone harder. <laughs> people are throwing hard. Um, but. So that was one aspect of why Travis scored so highly, which in turn was why he was then announced as the overall winner. Yeah. Now, a massive, massive kind of communication fuck up was that there was no communication of that in the live stream. Additionally, there was no communication of like Ed won the overall live stream. Right. The, the, no, Ed, Ed won the live competition. Travis won the overall thing. He it, The initial plan, as you said, because you watched it happen, mm. is Ed was meant to have his hand raised first as like you won the live. Yeah. And then Travis was meant to have his hand raised as like you won the whole so, thing. So I remember Nico was like to all the athletes, he was like, okay guys, so when um, Ed wins, we're going to announce it and it's going to be great. And then we're going to announce the overall winner, which but is Travis is, and we need you all to run in and this do like is all big happening final celebration. In seconds. Like the live yes. streams, in, I've got it in my ears from Austria. Yes. Like, it's all, all the judges are working things out and like everything is moving at fucking a hundred miles an hour. Yeah. So and then one little miscommunication from one person telling the athletes to come in and then for some reason, someone announcing- I think Kai of, didn't announce Ed, he announced Travis first. And yeah, it like, so they were meant to, they were meant to announce, yeah, Travis, uh, they're meant to announce Ed, you know, and that was all meant to be a whole moment and then Travis, but it just went straight to Travis. And for me, I knew what the plan was and I yeah. could just see Nico's face like, go like, no, yeah. like, this is not what's meant to happen. And while everyone was celebrating with Travis and it was all a good time, I was just watching like Nico Frosty and a bunch of the other Red Bull guys just like, losing their mind because it didn't because it didn't work out but yeah you know, and these, it's, it's these, these kind of things happen and they happened so quickly happen and so easily um so that was yeah one one of the big things it's like i literally have here like uh what the hell was this competition format like ed's ed's run was amazing and then verky won like yeah travis's yeah. run compared to some of the others was not at the same level because yeah. it, he didn't need to but it was the points thing yeah um his run was still pretty fucking sick. If you actually watch it, he does not waste a single step. It was no. fucking lovely. It was cool. It was a great run. But one of the biggest, biggest, biggest things that wasn't communicated, is, it was communicated, and this is another thing where it was, it was really strongly communicated to the athletes, mm. but a lot of people just don't necessarily think that tactfully when it comes to like competition lines. And also this is the first competition Red Bull have done that was like combo based. Yeah. Was, and if I look at this fucking sheet here, Athletes will throw down a short but powerful combos with a maximum time limit of 10 seconds. Yeah. So, and they Some were allowed- people's lines went over 10 seconds and that actually meant that they're, you know- they, Anything after 10 seconds wasn't out, counted. Wasn't counted. And I think Archie had that, and I think Miranda had that. And I think there were a couple of athletes who literally had bits of their line where the judges had to say, well, this is the rules. Like yeah. this, is, this is the criteria. We're objectively meant to judge like this, so. Yeah. And so I literally, straight after the competition went up, and I said to Pedro, I was like, I was really surprised that Ellis scored lower than Ed, only yeah. by like a 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 or something. And very, very quickly, Pedro was like, well, it's because of this. And what he said, and now if you go and watch the two lines, it's not like the most obvious thing, but it makes sense when you think about this criteria is that it had to, like, they were looking for combos and they mm. were looking for linkage and also spot usage. And if you watch Ed's, he starts at the top and yes, granted his isn't as, like um, he doesn't have as 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 many 
uh, non-wasted steps as Travis. Like Travis's yeah. every single step was like boom, 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 perfect. Ed's, there's a little bit of like stuttering about and things. But if you compare Ed's to Ellis's and you think about which one is more like a combo, yeah. Ellis does one thing, then he comes down, then he does another thing, then he runs over to the wall. Then he, mm. like Ellis's line is made up of four different yeah. movements or mini combos. Yeah. Ed's is not, I wouldn't say, it's harder to call Ed's like a perfect combo, yeah. but it's much more close it, to that. It is, yeah. And so when you think about judging a line on those like objective things, that's why he scored that's higher. That's why, yeah. Um, and, and I think for this, it's, a, it's another, to draw that point home again, it's a, just another lack of handholding. Yeah, you it's know, communication. For, Bull, for, for the audience who are watching to understand all of these things. Like, yeah. You know, just, just saying like, okay, athletes are judged on this. So then people can fully understand why people are scoring and higher it's the same, than each other. It happens in every single competition, this controversy. Yeah. Because it, it, it's so hard because you watch it and I was exactly the same. That's why I went up to Pedro and asked because I watched Ellis's and I was blown away. Mm. I watched Ed's. I was obviously blown away because it was still fucking sick. Yeah. But Ellis's had that, to me, that extra bit of spice because he did fucking full, full. Yeah. But yeah. if you then say, okay, well, which one was more of a combo? and you had to rank out of, let's say 10 points, which who got more in the combo perspective, yeah. Ed would be higher. And it's right. those differences that move the needle. Um, also, once again, it all has to happen in seconds. Like yeah. I've judged a comp, I judged Air Whip one year, it's fucked. You literally have seconds and to it's like, think, yeah. yeah. And you're like, oh fuck, how do, what, where do I put this? Where does that relate to the person that was four runs ago? Yeah. Like how do you compare that scale? Yeah, It's, it's so fucking It's a hard. difficult thing to do. So it's like, there were, there's a lot of valid criticisms and a lot of valid questions. And I think the biggest thing that we can take from this is that one, it wasn't meant to be art motion. And two, mm. it should, there, there should have been a lot more communication from Red Bull. Side. Yeah. Like there's, there's a bunch of things which constructive, like in terms of constructive criticism, which are really valid, you know, d better marketing for exactly what the format of this was better hand holding for the audience so that they can understand what's going on. Um, obviously all of, you know, better, you know, more e equality for the female athletes, having their own podium, having their own thing is vital. Something that was really cool actually is, um, as the podium was getting like put together, like they were like, Oh, Ed, like you guys stand here. I, I think it was one of the, like the kind of Red Bull reps or something like tried to move Sydney to the side. Right. Are you speaking bloggy? Oh, he's sending a voice message, I think. Um, they'd like try to go like, you know, Travis, Ed, Ellis, and then move. Uh, uh, w when I was just speaking that whole time, I was saying Ed and Ellis, wasn't I, about the runs? You know what? I have no idea, but just, let's go. As I said Ellis's name, I feel like that. I <laughs> the really first hope time I was. you ever said it. Um, they tried to move Sydney to the side and then Ed was like, no, Sydney, come fucking here. And he yeah, like moved yeah. her into the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's stuff like that. It's like- To have that camaraderie is so important. Yeah, yeah. Think, And it's, it's definitely that. It's definitely that. Um, but sorry, what were we saying? It's, it's, it's communication, isn't it? Like it's it was, communication. That's, that's the most valid criticism. Speaking to a lot of the organizers, everyone was referring to this event as a test. They yeah. were like, we're testing formats. And I think that's why- like I'm sure they've already acknowledged the fact that they need to communicate more. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm sure of it. Yeah. I'm just remembering as well is that this was never meant to be an art of motion. So like they weren't catering towards an audience to be able to explain what this was. What they were catering towards was having a tight group of people working together to make something. And also Red Bull, it's very, it would be very and hard. And all of the audience marketing afterwards would have came yeah. after that. It's yeah, also so. very hard for Red Bull to go oh, this wasn't meant to be. Like they can't come out and say this. They, no, they, because it's, it's, it's entirely unprofessional. It devalues what they've tried to put out. They can't say, oh, we're doing this, but it wasn't meant to be that. So it's why Nico, even though he- Yeah, not, no, but that's more for Red, for, for Red Bull as in, in terms of as Red Bull. You know, yeah. they can't do that. They can't be like, hi, everyone, here's this event. Oh, by the way, it's not like this because of this. Cause yeah, and Nico can't be like, say that because Red Bull are his client. But it's like, that's why I think, and I hope we're not speaking out of hand here, but like, yeah. like that's why we're- essentially doing this podcast is to yeah. sort of explain that. But also maybe we need to, we need to advocate for people like Red Bull who are big sponsors for the sport, for there to be more transparency like that. Uh, I, mean, Do you know, I don't know whether once it gets to such a commercial level like that, that you have to lose that transparency, but I think- I don't think you have to lose it. It's just much harder to maintain. It's just much harder like to maintain. Like every single statement that gets put out probably has to go through- Mm. a team, if you know what I mean, like a fucking Instagram post. I don't think you can just, you know, be in charge of Red Bull social media and just 
bang something on Twitter. It yeah. probably has to be somewhat like, Oh, it's got to go through layers yeah. you know, of the team to make sure. That and I, th- right because it's, it's out. because once you get to that level, there's just, as you said, there's so many moving parts and it's, it's the unfortunate thing when you get these large businesses that yeah. you do, unless they have put, at, like if you went back and built Red Bull from the, the ground up and you said, okay, well, as a precedent, these things are going to be in place, yeah. then they would be there today. Yeah. But it's because they, Red Bull is however many years old. It's like those things haven't been in place. Yeah. They've been able to get away with paying athletes like less yeah. because athletes will rock up anyway. And, and, and it's like, yeah, for the execs at Red Bull, how much do they actually understand the parkour culture as well? You know, mm-hmm. and really what we want and how much do, does, what we want actually to get listened to in the end. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like how how high up does our voice go? Yeah, how many top? layers does it get to of the building before it gets to the top and those decisions are made so that it's in harmony and paralleling with exactly. what we Exactly, and want? that's that's the kind of hardest thing. And it's why we need to be vocal about these matters. Yeah, thank God we have Nico as a medium between, well, that's between the thing, Red Bull and, it, and, and the community and we're having that conversation which will then ideally go to, to it the is top. Also, it's, it's why we need to be more vocal and it's why it's great that people do have objections and they do get yes. angry about things. Yes. But it also is why it is useful to have people somewhat on the inside. And this yeah. isn't Red Bull exclusive. This is with many, like let's say Nike got involved with parkour. Yeah. But like when Nike came into skateboarding, initially they were fucking rejected. Everyone hated it. Mm. Then Nike kind of did a 180 and like spent a bit of time. And then they basically linked up with prolific skaters of that time yeah. and went in kind of with the right angle and people were much more receptive to yeah. it because it yeah. was like, okay, we know we have the right people in the right place. Yeah, And it's, it's this thing of like, you can't, make the change necessarily by just straight up rejecting something and turning yes. your back on it. Like you well, can, it's, if you it's, then it's go more do- criticism, less hate. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it will, we, it's, you it's can, this fucking quote. It's criticized, th- criticized through creation, not through finding fault. Yes. And it, I can't remember by who it's by, but it's that exact thing of like, you, you have to sort of, make those changes and get yeah. involved and make those things rather than just going, oh, that's shit. And it's also, yeah. And it's and also like, like, oh, you don't like something? Well, make it, well, do it yourself and make it the way you want to do yeah. it. It's like anyone who, you know, is involved in this sport and, you know, wants to do things to help it grow, they see something like Red Bull and they don't like it. Well, okay, take what Red Bull are doing and try to do it in a way that's better for yourself. Mm. And, and there's a way you want to do it, which is a hard thing to do. Yeah, like, but it's not possible. Not everyone will have the willpower to do it, but it's possible and it's there. And like, I, I will be, yeah, I think both of us are sitting here and neither of us, we've had a lovely time and it's been a great event, but neither mm. of us are saying it's fucking perfect. And it like- It's not th- perfect. There was there was things I was, you know, that, I, that was happening while I was there. And I was like, I don't understand why this is like that. Was I there for like, I hate this? No, I was like, it would be cool if it was done like this. And the good thing is, is that we could literally say, and we did to certain people, it's like, oh, imagine like, one of the big suggestions was like, imagine if the two formats of the first two days were swapped around. So yes. that the, the Instagram clip idea, everyone filming clips. Was on the same on the spot. Court. And then the video idea, you could go across the island. Yeah. Which would have been made way more sense, yeah. I think. Uh, but it, but at the same time, would it? Because then everyone's not on the same playing field. True. Which is, so there's all these things. So it's, it's like, like, there's so many nuances of this to, you know, that to be considered and to be thought about. Yeah. Um, let me just have a look at these Instagram things. I'm desperate for a wee. Oh, um, you can go and I can just like put on a beat and rap for a little bit. <laughs> Wait, you can't do that again, I'm, Sam. I'm sorry. What? Are you kidding me? That was a one-off. Last time it was brilliant. It was. Um, if you haven't listened to Sam's, uh, episode, by the way, you should go and dig it out because it's it's great. And you'll also find out a lot more about Sam in case you've sort of not dug it. I'm not very interesting. I'll be honest. He is. Somebody said, where can you watch the competition? I now don't know. It was streaming on Facebook and TikTok, but I'm not sure if it still is. Mm. Um, so I mean, you know, what would have actually been quite cool is if the athletes and filmmakers had been briefed for us all to post our videos at the same time, yeah. the ones we had made, because then it would have also put more emphasis, uh, on, emphasis on heat two and that there actually is a heat two. Like, I don't know how many people knew there was a heat two. A lot of people didn't. I didn't even put it, I didn't even really put it on, um, well, no, Red Bull, Red Bull Freerunning actually did put out a post which explained what they were doing, but how many people are actually seeing that post and yeah. actually understanding it? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Shay and Ellis, if you want to drop your videos, please do, because then I can get tagged and... And yeah, and yeah. You know. I mean, for me, this has been, this has been brilliant. I, for when Lilu put out her 
uh, the video and it was like a collaborative, collaborative thing. Like I got loads of followers and like, <laughs> I'm, I was gassed about that. I was like, this is great, man. Yeah, yeah. Not that you can like followers, they don't, um, they're they, not, they they don't not matter, really value, but, but it's just nice to see that if you are using Instagram as a tool to, um, as a filmmaker, to, which you are, yeah, yeah. to put out your, to put out your art, then it's great to have new eyes on that. Yeah. Somebody said, why was the course so small? Seemed like a lot of people liked it. It, it was honestly at the, 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 art, the final course was probably one of the best. One of the best. Yeah. I've been to a lot of our motions. One of the best uh, from like a, just a overall training combo, everything. The layout was really compact, mm. nice and downhill as they all are. But like, it was really, really good. Like everyone was so happy and the yeah. really good quality bars. Um, I yeah. think with, well, who knows what Red Bull will go on to do. Maybe they'll still continue Red Bull out of motion and also have a separate, uh, that would know, be my a dream. Separate format. That'd be great. But you're definitely going to see more of Astapalia. Oh, if that's how you say it, because that is an amazing. Yeah, there was a question I couldn't find it of somebody saying like, "What was this place compared to like Santorini?" Better. So much better. Yeah, like more more condensed, uh, smaller. So it's like you don't have to you don't have to like walk it's ten crazy minutes. Crazy like how small in the everything same is. Area. And like, also how friendly. We unintentionally walked into the mayor's. I literally walked into the mayor's <laughs> office. We there were some Red Bull fridges outside a. a a building and I yeah. thought I was looking for uh, water because they just had Red Bulls in them. And I walked in, there were like a few cases of Red Bull and I was like, oh, maybe this is like the one of the Red Bull because they had a few like Airbnbs rented as like media offices and things. Yeah. And I walked in, there's this like kind of like poorly old man sitting in a chair and I was like, hello. And he was like, hello. And I was like, uh, is this the Red Bull thing? He was like, no. And he was like, I'm the mayor. And I was like, yeah. oh fuck. What the heck? <laughs> but no, everyone was so accommodating. He was a legend. Island. Yeah. And I think something that's happened with Santorini is it started to have more tourism there. And also, uh, for the actual Island, for the rooftops, more hotels and oh, the hotels and do not just, want you touching it. So they also, the locals just hated the amount of people and like, yeah. That. Especially during the last the, the party hours, so it would have been very different to see because I think the last Santorini I went to there was probably like a couple hundred extra athletes, mm. um, and seeing that many people on this tiny island probably would have been a bit mental. Mm. I don't know what it would be like if there was like an, an on site for that kind of thing. It might yeah. have, it might have changed it because the locals might have been had a, had enough. I think I'm not gonna lie. By the end of the trip, I think, because uh, we had uh, two restaurants, which, you know, we literally were, which the we island, ate at. The island has two restaurants and a kebab yeah. shop on it. And uh, by the end, they were so ready for us to leave. Yeah. Because it was the only place everyone would eat at and also drink at. And so, yeah, yeah got they were done with us. We were like, oh, hopefully we're back soon. And they were like, <laughs> yeah, maybe. Yeah. Uh, we were well behaved. We, it's not. I'm not like coming across as if we were really bad. I think it was just a lot of, business for them. So very, very busy and very intensive hours of just like- He was like, you guys are like artists. And we were like, what do you mean? He was like, you're just like kind of, and I was like off the wall. He was like, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe less local to what they're- Yeah. What, uh, less at the, what, they, what they're normally used to with yeah. like locals or people coming. Somebody said, could a pure parkour run be good enough to win equal difficulty wise, Volt and Pre versus a flip? I think technically if you had the right if you, if you did it, yeah, like yeah, it's I, some I, parkour moves are way way more difficult than a flip. I think like, it, like real. at the end of the day, though, you get someone like Travis. I mean, that Kong Pri he did in his line is horrible, very yes. low and giant. Yeah, uh, and it's like, but he has the capacity to also do Kong gain. It's like if if you have the capacity to do both at yes. a high level, like Travis, and let, let's say you you had pure parkour to the level of Travis, but couldn't do any flips but Travis could do pure parkour and flips. It's like, well, that's going to win. Yeah. I think that'd be great to see more uh, of, of athletes knowing that they need to bring more of a hybrid of free running and parkour style it, because to, to get higher scores, because yeah. let's be honest, I kind of feel like parkour gets overlooked sometimes. You know what I mean? One, because it's actually hard to see how disgusting something is yeah. when it's parkour, how big it is to scale. What you can see though is like, okay, Archie's throwing down one of the coolest flips I've ever seen in my life and it looks amazing. It looks like some sort of like rhythmic dance and he's just throwing down. That looks great. And in, and everyone, especially, I hate call this, I hate the word muggles, but for yeah. someone who doesn't really understand parkour, seeing that instantly, they're like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. But like Travis doing a concrete that's, insanely big is hard to justify how big it is unless you have a smaller like somebody worse doing a smaller one yeah yeah like I, I 
was scared to do the standing pre of what Travis Kong pre'd. Yeah, like I, it's, it's naughty. I never did it. I, I know I could physically, but I didn't do it because I was just like not really training. But like, yeah. it wasn't a joke. I mean, the and thing he that, did it with two steps the out thing of the that sucks uh, for me is that like I'm huge and I prefer my parkour style to my flip style. And, but every, a lot of things I do because I'm massive just doesn't Done. look yeah. as big as yeah, what it yeah, actually yeah. is. So if you ever watch my movement and you see like something like a jump I'm doing and it looks somewhat big, just know that it's actually probably a little bit bigger. I just bigger, make yeah. it look small. Yeah, for sure. That's me just trying to hype up. <laughs> <laughs> it's bigger than you think. I'm better than I am. <laughs> um, I feel like we should wrap this up because mm. I think we've covered some good bits. I, I think like, we've covered everything. I don't want it to be too long. Yeah. Um, How long have we been going for so far? An hour and 20. I think that's perfect. Yeah. Um, if there's final thing I would say, yeah, just, just drilling at home that this is still a progressive sport and a growing sport and anything happening within this community, it's a, it's, it's a beautiful thing for us to be, to, to see. And I think I really hope for everyone in the community for whatever happens within this community to criticize. Yes, but not to hate and to just try and like, shit on it because it, that's never going to be constructive and we all want co like constructiveness. So I think, yeah, criticism is really good. And I think for Red Bull um, or anyone else doing these sorts of competitions, you need to listen to your audience and, and to communicate with the audience and to be transparent, to know that the community and the audience are getting what they need and that things are correct and right. Um, but I think we can really see people that things are going to get better. The conversations we can confirm are being had, uh, are being had for female athletes to be treated better um, and for lots of other things. So that's kind of my conclusion. That was very good. Very impressive. Thanks. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll just say, I don't know. <laughs> I need a wee. <laughs> um, no, yeah. I think Sam Sam nailed it there. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. Cool. Because yeah, I totally agree. So Sweet. Um, once again, thank you all for listening etc subscribe like blah 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 blah. i'm sure we said some shit and this is that's wrong and you're probably going to dm us and, and we're gonna they're gonna start hating us yeah and, but, you uh, know constructive criticism but fuck it whatever yeah cool <laughs> love you sweet bye